When I was 10 years old, I, I was a big fan of the Terminator movie. Um, I wasn't familiar with Stan Winston at the time, but uh, I built my own Terminator <laughs> out of plastic tubes and a shoebox and uh, an old styrofoam head I had and then covering it with you know aluminum foil and I had an LED light in it and I was able to make the fingers move with some strings. And then 10 years later, I was 21, 20, 21, I worked for Stan Winston's and we started on Terminator 3. Rise of the Machines, and I was able to help on the real endoskeleton. So it's cool to run those two pictures next to each other. Coming from Friesland, which is a very, um, uh, very northern part of the Netherlands, um, but there, there isn't much you can connect with, especially on film and entertainment. You know, I think me, me growing up with a single mother and two sisters and having no money, it was probably very healthy, knowing that it was very valuable. If I would spend that dollar on some clay to make a sculpture, that you know, I better do something great with it. Because I already knew I wanted to do this stuff. I think my mom and my elementary school teacher at the time looked for a makeup school, makeup effects school. I was 16, I finished high school, moved to Amsterdam did this makeup school. Within that year and a half, I was like a sponge. I was absorbing so much stuff. And I learned about Dick Smith. I started corresponding with him. And he lived in New York. And he did The Exorcist and Amadeus and old movies like that, The Godfather. And I started working for little movies and TV in the Netherlands. And I was happy. I was 18. You know, I was making a little money and uh, doing, studying with Dick Smith, corresponding with him. But mind you though, this doesn't come with just like a, you know, I was working every single weekend, every night, every, you know, I was sending him photos. Within a year, he was basically, you gotta come to Los Angeles. I, you know, I was 19 at the time. I interned for Kevin Yeager, and I interned for ADI, which is another effects studio, and then for Stan Winston's. That studio was filled with a lot of amazing people and you f you feed off from that. Eventually I would get the key to Stan Winston Studios. So I would be there at night. I mean, I remember sleeping there a lot. And at night I would sculpt or paint or build makeup. Some friends of mine or life cast my neighbors wake up in the morning <laughs> you know, with people coming into the studio. So it was tough, but at the same time it was very good because it gives you a good, healthy perspective. You got to earn every penny. Stan was sponsoring me at the time and my visa was running out and I still had to wait for my green card. So I had to move back to Europe uh, against my will. I wasn't really looking forward to that. And uh, because I, I mean, you're at Stan Winston's studio, why would you move back to Europe? <laughs> you know, I had a time in my life there and Stan calls me and he says, I met this Spanish film, uh, crew there, they were doing background masks and they heard about my story. We're doing this small movie called El Labyrinto del Fauno, Pan's Labyrinth. and." Um, would you like to come to Barcelona with us? Didn't think too much of it, nor did they. We started working and they said, well, um, we're doing the pan, the, the character with the, you know, the horns, and um, we're doing the, the big frog that spits out the key. Would you like to do, there's a monster in there. We don't quite, we're not quite sure yet at this time what he's gonna look like, but he's called the Pale Man. And I remember it first had like eyes and, and stuff, but then Guillermo said, well, you know, I want his eyes in his hands, and I, at the time, I hated it. And we still, and me and Guillermo, till this day, still joke about it. <laughs> so, and I did the Pale Man. I did a couple of different uh, concept uh, sculptures for that. But he was right because it was a character that came from a child's imagination, and it could be anything. People still come up to me today about that character that it gave them nightmares. I live, breathe, and eat this stuff. You will recognize moments where you go like, okay, if I hadn't worked hard that weekend, I wouldn't have had this or met this person or gotten this compliment. I remember moments where I had literally $4 on my bank account, $4. After a while, Stan Winston and actually uh, was kind enough to help sponsor me for my immigration papers, my working visas, and eventually my green card. And uh, that changed my life.